Hi everyone, Nicholas Devine, Assistant Professional out here at Lake Karanuk Country Club and back with another club review. Today I have for you the Ping G700 iron. Now, it's a little bit bigger than the G400, but what they're saying about this club is absolutely amazing. So hang out for this video and we'll have a quick chat about it. So here we have it, Ping G700 iron. Now, we'll talk about the technology about this first and then we'll hit some shots and we'll see some numbers. Um, and then I've also hit some G400 shots just so we get a relative idea or comparison between the two because both of them are supposed to be an extremely forgiving iron. But the GS700 is supposed to be even more forgiving than the G400. But first, let's talk about this golf club. Stainless steel head. Miraging steel face insert. Now, miraging steel, we've heard about that a few times now. Miraging steel is that high grade or strong metal that they can put in the face that they can actually make really thin. So when the ball hits the face, it absolutely trampolines off the face. So miraging steel, you've heard that in a couple of the pin clubs that have been released of late. Again, we see that in the G700 iron. Now, a bit more of an ergonomic or sleeker design than the G400, especially when you look at it from my point of view, when I put this down on the ground, it has a bit more of a, I guess, a bladish look, but in saying that, it still has the offset. It is still a much, much bigger head than a blade, but it still gives you that blade appearance. Now, we've all he he uh, seen hollow heads being released lately. TMB, uh, TMB from Titleist, uh, the P790 from TaylorMade. The list goes on in all this floating face and hollow head material, but this is Ping's version of a hollow head. Um, not much else to talk with regards to head. Like I said, stainless steel head, miraging steel face, hollow head. It's probably more important to see what kind of numbers this club puts out in comparison to the G400. So I'm gonna hit this here first, and then I'll hit the G400, we'll have a bit of a comparison. And then later, week, later in the week, I'm gonna do what I call what ping iron best suits you. So I'm gonna have the I200, the G400, and the G700, and I'm gonna hit all three and then we're going to have a comparison to see what one probably suits you in the world of ping golf clubs but we're here for the g700 today let's have a hit with this um, and we'll see how it goes and like i said i'm going to listen to the sound of this because if it's a hollow head they generally put off a bit more of a different sound to the good old forged head or the cast cavity style heads um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this sounds because some people really don't like the sound of hollow heads but like i said Let's hit it first and we'll see how we go. Now, just letting you know again, I'm using the SkyTrack to grab all the ball data and I'm using NXT Tour S as the golf ball. Enough talking, let's do some hitting. Now, like I said, it is a big head. It is bigger than the G400. So if you see the image come up on the screen right now, you can see that it is a little bit bigger than the G400, but the top line is a lot more attractive than the G400. Now it has got a wide sole as well, so you get a lot of ground interaction, so it's supposed to be even more forgiving because of that. And then also because it's that wider head, CG location's a little bit further back, so we're expecting it to go miles up into the air. Now here's one thing I didn't say. Generally a seven iron, most clubs, or when you're using seven iron of the clubs that I use, so like your forge style heads or your blade style heads, they're usually around the 34 to, five, 34 to 35 degrees of loft. This here comes in at 29. Now, that is an extremely, extremely soft 7-iron. So what they're saying, again, just like I've said it many, many times now over the last six months, it's going to go out like a 5-iron, but it's going to launch like an 8-iron. So I'm expecting this to go up into the stratosphere. Anyway, let's hit one first and see how we go. And just as expected, it has gone up into the stratosphere. An extremely, extremely high ball flight. And the sound is very, very different. It's not like the usual sound that you have off, off a forge club. It is very much hard, hard, hard to describe the sound, but it is very different. Uh, maybe when I hit the G400, you'll probably hear it a little bit more.
feels amazing off the face but but very much more of a clunky sound you know when you hit that forge kind of head you, you can feel like the ball melts into the face and it comes off with a dead sound this has much more of a clunky sound which is very common with the hollow head material faces anyway i'll hit a couple more with this and then i'll move on to the g400 Now I've done a couple of days testing with this over the last two days and I'm going to show you the numbers from yesterday and the numbers from today. The one thing is for sure and because it's an extremely big head and an extremely forgiving head I do find it hard to hit low shots or hit those little hooks or hit those slidey cuts but generally if you're buying this kind of club you're not looking for that kind of thing. You're actually looking for something that's extremely forgiving, easy to get up in the head, into the air. So it is definitely a club that I would re recommend for your entry level golfer. Or if you're one of those people who is sick and tired of inconsistent shots, you might find a little bit more consistency out of this because it's a lot more forgiving. But every shot I've hit so far, extremely high ball flight, but my God, is it traveling. Like normally I'll hit a seven iron for me, roughly 148 to 150. This thing's going out there at about 160 to 163. So it's extremely long. So that strong face technology is really coming through and making these balls go miles. But like I said, it's going out like an eight iron. It goes so high. Now I'm using the Modus Tour 105 shaft, so very similar to the shaft I normally use. So I'm very used to this shaft, So, and it is a stiff shaft, so I'm used to hitting this shaft. So it's a good way of testing this club because it is very close to what I use. Okay, you've seen all the numbers come up on the screen. I'm going to quickly hit a couple with the G400 and then we'll wind it up on what I think about this club. Okay, I'm only going to hit about four or five with this, so I'm going to get through this pretty quick um, just so you can see the numbers difference between the G400 and the G700. So let's just get through this real quick. Okay, so now you can see the numbers coming up on the screen and we're gonna look at the white club or the white lines, which is the G700 and the orange is the G400. Now the G700, as you can see there, on an average I was hitting it at 158 in comparison to the G400 of 150. So there's a massive eight meters there, but that's also got to do with the fact that that face is also slightly stronger. G400 comes in at 31 degrees strong, whereas the G700 comes in at 29. But you can see there the club head speeds were exactly the same at 86. But because of that floating face on the G700, you can see the smash factor between the two. One's 1 1.30, the other one's 1 1.34. So that floating face with that miraging still really does shoot the golf, call, the golf ball off the golf club and actually give it that extra bit of distance. So if you're definitely looking for dif distance, then G700's for you. If you're looking for something extremely forgiving, both models are extremely forgiving. So you could go either way with those two. But definitely, definitely, definitely the G700 does go a lot further. The one thing I'll leave but with, with you with this whole thing is the G400, I did find it easier to work left, right, right, hit high shots, hit low shots. The G700, 
I couldn't get that workability out of the club, but again, the G700 isn't built for that. That club is purely built to get that ball up in the air and make it go miles. And if you're an entry level golfer looking for an extremely easy club to hit, or you're a person who is just looking for that extra forgiveness and looking for that little bit more distance than the G700 is probably the club for you. So there you go, Ping G700. Due to be released in the market here in Australia in the next couple of weeks, it is all already down at the golf clubs for you to try and go get fitted to. So definitely pop down and see me at Lake Canop if you want to get fitted. But I'm sure there's lots of golf clubs around the world who have already got them. So if you want to go and get fitted for them, it is definitely a club worth trying. Anyway, make sure you like. Leave a comment in the comment section after you've tried that iron and let me know how you went. Most of all, hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell next to it because that's the bell that's going to give you a notification of when the next video comes out. And you're going to want to watch the next video because that's when I put the G700, G400 and the i200 together. And I'll try and tell you what I think the best club is for you as an individual based on your handicap. And with my swing speed at the where of where, where my swing speed is, it is very, very, very similar to most of you club golfers out there. So you're going to get a very, very good comparison for what should suit you in the world of golf. Anyway. Like I said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on ND Golf.